Here we are live on social media. Hi, everybody. Good evening. Good afternoon. Depends on where you are on earth. <laughs> But I'm really happy to do this podcast today. I'm Caroline and I'm doing this with a lot of passion and enthusiastic and attitude. I want to bring more eyes towards puppetry art. So welcome to the Puppet Podcast. I have this episode. We are now at episode 134, la la la, with Raven Kalyana. What ta ta ta. So yes, we are really excited to connect with UK artists and I'm, I'm really excited to, to discover all of her passion. So before we go into the interview, I just want to let you know what's happening in the Puppet Podcast universe. I'm, I'm basically back on show, so I'm performing a lot of stuff outdoor, but we also do, we launched the book. Eli write a book about uh, living from your art and some tools to help you to manage publicity, social media, and the good discipline that we have to, to, to have for this. So feel free to, to look online about this wonderful book, but also our Patreon. We want to create other uh, workshop coming soon so stay tuned we will have a lot of new guests to inspire uh, you with your art so this was the little plug i need to put the little banner right here so if you don't know patreon it's really easy it's patreon.com as puppet podcast So yeah, now that said, feel free when you are watching this to communicate with us with comments, chat, and just ask questions. If you want to ask questions to my guests, feel free to do so. So we will bring it into the screen and we will be in real time. But if you watch it, after all, it's always good to have a little comment about the interview. So ladies and gentlemen, please Drum roll for the wonderful Raven Kaliana. <laughs> I must have special effect to clear. And you have Here I am. Yeah, thank you so much, Raven, to accept this invitation to be part of the, the Puppet Podcast. Uh, the first thing I ask my guests to do is to present themselves. I could do a big intro about you, but I always like to hear the presentation of the puppeteer from like himself so could you do it sure <laughs> well uh, i would say that i'm um, a director and a puppet maker and also a puppeteer and i write uh, my own stories uh i've done a lot of i've done a lot of touring <laughs> Um, I would say I'm a socially engaged artist. So for me, I'm very interested in the capacity of puppets to tackle issues that people maybe don't really want to talk about. Mm. And I think it's actually quite magical because it, they can really give people the courage to explore things that maybe... It's a little bit of a scary subject or it's something uh, seems a little overwhelming or taboo even. And what I've done, uh, I, I would say the biggest show that I've done uh, or the thing that I would say has maybe the most impact is a show called Hooray for Hollywood. And that was a show about human trafficking using puppets as the, the child victims who were trafficked. And uh, it, was, it was a very uh, moving experience to talk with audiences about those issues and to talk about how can we change it? How can we pr better protect children? How can we change laws so that uh, trafficked people are, are better protected? And uh, it's very empowering for me, um, aside from, you know, being puppeteer, director, all that stuff. I'm, I'm also a survivor of human trafficking myself. So for me, it was, it was um, an amazing way to reach out to, I, I would guess, to uh, step into a role of protection of um, young people uh, who might still be trapped in terrible situations and try to improve 
things in the world for them. So for me, it was a very like meaningful project. But I do all sorts of different social issues. Um, one, uh, a show that I'm working on right now is called Astra. And it's a show about a post-apocalyptic society uh, here on Earth. Uh, and they've figured out a way to reclaim part of the land. But then there's still all these social issues that human beings are just prone to. So it follows with the post-show discussion about um, environmental issues, but also what can we do about social issues? How can we go forward in a way that is fair and that treats people well and is not about exploitation, but about nurture. So I'm very excited to start touring that show. And uh, we've just now made it like really like we, the last performance of the first work in progress finished on the 3rd of July. So it's brand, brand new show. So I'm very excited about that. And I've also done another um, another show this year that was a, a film for children, a short film for children on environmental issues. So it was kind of uh, meant to inspire young people and empower young people to uh, take action. You know, it could be, you know, small local action, but it still helps to change the tide of the um, kind of intimidating problems that we're having in the world. So... Uh, I really want to empower people through my work, I would say. Wow, that's so well said. To empower humanity is kind of the role of artists uh, in my deep philosophy, but it, it's kind of uh, interesting to say it as part of, of the role and the job. That's great. Yeah. I think that our artists are on the cutting edge or the forefront of thought and action, idea, And I, I really agree that like artists have this amazing role in society to kind of look beyond the horizon. Yeah, yeah, to see the future or yeah. like said something about it. That's so uh, subjective at the same time. Mm. So I have a lot of deep questions, mm. always the same, Ooh. but so deep. <laughs> so are you ready, Raven, for the deep I'll, question? I'll, I'll prepare myself, yes. <laughs> yeah. So I want to know first, Why do you cherish the art of puppetry? Oh, I love puppets so much. Um, I think part of it is, I think, I mean, I just have like a personal belief that the spirit or soul is everywhere around us. Mm. And I think it's such a beautiful thing that, I mean, I do think that anything can be a puppet. I think that. I think that a puppeteer can like help reveal the soul of anything or everything around us and reminds us of like who, who we are deep inside. And I just think it's a beautiful, beautiful thing to be a puppeteer. Yes, I think you have like in your answer a bit of spirituality in, in terms yeah. of soul and like yeah. spirit. Yeah, well, I would say that, you know, um, you know, in the history, in the history of puppetry, so it's so connected to like religion and spirituality as well. You know, um, you know, you could say like um, the, uh, the, the shadow puppet theater in Indonesia, for instance, is very much connected with a, um, a, a, a story that is, um, uh you know very ancient uh, ancient tale yeah and uh you would say that uh some of the first you know puppets that have been found or things that we think are shadow puppets were made in caves by humans and you know there's really ancient little relics um that uh seem to have you know moving parts and they also seem to be you know connected with Um, spirituality or, or, or some sort of religion. Yeah. So I think that I think that historically that it is connected with the spirit, or at least you know a feeling of um, a feeling of spirit or a feeling of communication with maybe another world or another type of idea or another realm. So I I, I think it's a, a revealing a revealing. 
Yeah, a revealing art. I love your, your answer. This is amazing. And I want to reveal to the public the beautiful puppet that you have in, in your yeah. background. Because <laughs> I... Uh, <laughs> They are amazing. Yeah, many on those. <laughs> yes, these ones, uh, the, the ones behind me here, these were, these were made for Astra, which is the, the new show, and six tabletop puppets. It was a lot of work. But uh, we also have, there was also loads of shadow puppetry as well. Um, I do loads and loads of shadow puppetry. I love shadows. And I love particularly uh, intertwining different types of puppetry. Uh, for me, that's very exciting because it's it's just, again, sort of goes with the idea of like, you know, everything being sacred, everything being like a, um, a, a potential source of connection for, for yeah. us. Yeah. Signification, and it's also a, a good way to say that puppetry could educate yes. uh, an audience to some, some new thought and stuff. Yes. But, uh, I want to have some anecdote on this point about the crush. When, like, how did your crush for puppetry happen? Well, I would say, I mean, I grew up with Sesame Street on the television, and that's how I learned to read, was watching Sesame Street. And I learned to read, you know, about, uh, you know, about a year, a, a year before other kids did. So I think it was just Sesame Street that taught me and not, you know, not grown-ups. I learned from puppets how to read. <laughs> and... um and uh, I, I, I love the characters. And in fact, I started, you know, I started drawing also when I was very young, when I was three years old, I started drawing pictures. And I think, I think when I was about three, I drew a recognizable Muppet. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. And yes. And so, but, you know, I, I watched, you know, I, wa I watched some, you know, documentaries about, you know, the, the making of Sesame Street, and, you know, Jim Henson and Frank Oz. And they, it all just looks so uncomfortable with their arms up in the air. And I thought, whoa, maybe I don't want to do that thing because it just looked, you know, kind of painful. But then when I, you know, I, I did all sorts of art. I did painting and I did sculpture and I did loads of creative writing. And uh, uh, after I left, you know, after I graduated from university, just randomly, I got hired by this amazing company called Folk Modest Puppets. And uh, they're, they were like a family to me, like just really amazing people, so inspiring and what wonderful work they did. Beautiful, like animal hand puppets. I just love, love them. I love their company. I'm like forever grateful for that experience. And uh, basically, you know, I started out, I was just kind of helping out in their office a bit. And then I started touring, you know, going around, um, traveling to different cities with, with their puppets, like um, dem just demonstrating their, their puppets. But they had like 250 different characters. So I had to like create a character, an individual character for each one of them. And it was, well, I loved it. I loved it so much. And it was, we, we kept on getting letters um, and emails from people who, you know, had used puppets for therapy for children. And it was so lovely to read those. And I just thought, wow, that's really amazing. And then at some point I saw Lion King uh, in New York and I thought, oh my goodness, puppetry can be for adults, can't it? And then I, it just a light bulb went on my head like, okay, what I really need to do is tell my own very challenging autobiographical story mm. through puppets. And I need to do it for adults so that things can change in the world, that it's, it's not just um, that, that, the, that the show itself can help, help change things and, and help you know, spark some much needed conversations about the mm. issue. Wow. I, I moved to the UK and got um, a degree from Central School of Speech and Drama in London. And that was also a very good experience of collaboration, finding other people totally passionate about puppetry who were also very intrigued by the story and willing to help me, you know, get that on its feet. And uh, I, I'm also very, very grateful to my, my collaborators who 
who encouraged me and, and, and helped me create that. Wow, what a story. This is so amazing to see your progression towards the yeah. art of Manis to New York to UK. And in terms of UK, we have Ronnie Ledrew say, Hello, Reva. Lovely to see you. Yes, so cool. Yeah, Aww. it's a small world and we have yes. a great connection, as you said. And I want to hear you, like, because you, you were talking about study. What, in your opinion, will be the best field of study to achieve puppetry art and to make a living from, from that? Well, I say it's really, it's kind of a sad thing, actually, that there aren't more puppetry programs, that there should be degree programs for puppetry. Because what an amazing, powerful, magical art form that's so useful, it's so practical in all dimensions mm -hmm. and yet it's pushed out and it's marginalized and it's like oh you have to have a degree in something else because how can you learn how to do puppetry mm -hmm. it's just it's really difficult in the uk there's an amazing program that's called uh, the curious school of puppetry and it's an eight-week program where actually you just stop and you do puppetry and People are so, they come out so skilled, they come out so inspired, they come away from it, um, you know, with, with loads of professional connections. So I really, really admire Sarah Wright, who uh, started that program. I really admire that, that she has established that because there's really a, a really shameful lack of degree programs that are focused on puppetry. There was... There was at one point a, a degree program at Royal Central School of Speech and Drama where, where I went to university. There, there was a BA puppetry program for a few years, but for some reason that is gone now. I don't, I'm not sure why, but I am sad that it's gone because it, it should exist. And yeah, the thing that I took was um, a collaborative theater course that was called Advanced Theater Practice Master's Degree. And that one was um, basically I just worked with uh, people from all sorts of disciplines, like actors and lighting designers and writers and directors. And we all just kind of like kind of grouped together and tried to make shows together. Like, But it was actually a really great experience for me to learn um, horizontally from the other students. Uh -huh. And yes, so I, I learned basically all the different things that you need to do as a puppeteer. I, I kind of learned like script writing. How do you, you know, how do you write a script for puppetry? How do you light puppetry? How do you make sound for puppetry? You know, how do you, so it was just this whole like um, uh, learning, but it's almost like um, a, like a cross section of theater. And that's, wow. I really got a lot out of that course, I really did. And uh, I, it was a fantastic, it was just the right place for me. It was very inspiring and just okay. the right, right for my kind of level of knowledge at that time as well so wow. it was good. that's true that we learn from other artists and, and yeah. the fact that puppetry is a combination of all of those uh, yeah. different skills all together yeah. but i want to hear your definition of a puppet in your own word when you explain what you do what word you use <laughs> Well, I mean, I do, you know, I've seen loads of amazing object puppetry where someone just picks up a cup and then the cup has a soul. But I think it's just that the, the, what makes a puppet is actually the puppeteer's focus. It's actually the puppeteer um, sort of seeing the possibilities in something else. And, you know, I do make, it does. It is easier for audiences to imagine, say, a human character if the character looks like a human. Yeah. But then again, it's like if uh, if the character looks like a cup, maybe there's a lot of metaphor around why does it look like a cup? What is it? What is it? What is it about a cup that you decided that this is why you have this character? So there's so much potential for puppetry. It really is an amazing medium. But also, I don't want to, you know. Uh, it, it takes a lot of time and a lot of work and a lot of um, 
specialist knowledge to make a puppet as well. Like it is really like a, a very highly developed field. <laughs> so um, there's that aspect of it as well. Um, so, you know, on one hand, it's like a very accessible medium. You could just take some stuff out of your recycling bin and make a puppet. And then the other hand, um, to make a puppet that, uh, say, you want it to move like a real human. You know, you want the, the, the wrist to move like a real humans would do. Or what if you want the fingers to move? You know, it's like that takes such a high level of skill and mechanical knowledge to create. So it really just depends on what type of care what the story needs i think that's what it comes down to what does yeah. the story need does it need uh, a metaphor that's you know quite broad or does it need does the character need to be quite specific so that people can relate with it almost like human to human right. and uh, so i think it i think it does depend mostly on what what the story needs i love it because that's true we are a storyteller and it's yes a good way to to name it and um it, like as you travel also a lot in china and all over mm -hmm. i want to to see your perception do you feel puppetry is in an ascension right now it's getting more popular or less what do you think on this um i think definitely i mean in the uk i would say since war horse it definitely has been on the upswing um i say i think what happens is it kind of goes through cycles where sometimes uh so children's theater i would say anything you know using puppets for children's theater that's always going to be fairly steady because i think there's always going to be some demand for that um but i think that i think that sometimes uh puppetry for adults kind of can sometimes go according to what the economy is doing because it does, it is a little bit more of a risk just because people don't immediately associate shows with puppetry with uh, at audiences consisting of adults. Mm -hmm. um, so it is like a little bit more of a barrier. So it create, it's like a little bit more risk um, for theaters, but I think that can be, I think that's overcome when the theater is known for say experimental work or if they're known for taking like greater artistic risks and bringing in things that are quite new and interesting and unusual and i think it can also depend on um maybe i think it does uh depend also on what the what the audience needs For instance, uh, I think that right now what's in the upswing is actually um, socially responsible art. I think that art mm. that, uh, that is about um, awareness raising and problem solving, that that's actually on the upswing right now. I've seen a lot of it. Mostly what I've seen is in... Um, universities offering a lot of socially engaged theater courses and there's also like a kind of a movement towards puppet drama therapy as well which is you know less not exactly performance but it is like an, another uh, very practical use of puppetry and often there are performances involved with uh, puppet drama therapy as well it is like such a versatile and useful medium it really is Wow, I love the fact that you bring those theme of like social uh, engagement. I feel it's really it's not something that often people say like loudly. Like this is this is the upper trend. So let's be engaged socially. I want to yeah. hear you now on your purpose. And maybe it's on that side also. What is your like big purpose as a puppeteer, as a, a director, as a Uh, a, a puppet maker what do you envision for the future as something to accomplish as a an artist well i mean for me what's what's meaningful is i mean for for all all of my live performances 
what I do is I follow with a post-show discussion. Mm. And I try to structure it so that it's about problem solving, about the issue, whatever the show, whatever sorts of issues are in the show. Because one thing that's so powerful about theater, just theater itself, is you have a whole group of people sitting in a room sharing one experience together. And you don't get that when you're sitting at your computer alone watching a video. You don't even get that, don't really even get that at, I think maybe even a movie theater, you don't necessarily get that because everybody kind of leaves immediately afterwards. But with theater, uh, people can tend to kind of clump around in little groups and talk a little bit about what they've seen. And so if you actually create like a post-show discussion, um, then it really invites people to kind of get to know each other in the audience. It creates new connections among audience members. It helps people see, you know, that they have the shared experience. They, it, it helps them focus their opinions on what it is that they saw. It helps them uh, empower them to see that they can personally do something about whatever issue it is that they, that they personally care about. And um, it, it's, uh, it's an amazing, I don't know, it feels like alchemy to me. I, I love that experience. And uh, I would say Astra is, uh, a, for me, like very meaningful show. We follow with a post-show discussion on the intersection of um, uh, ecological justice and social justice. So how do we balance uh, you know, our, what we're taking from the world and how do we balance what we're taking from humans? How do we create a system that's not, on expo not, about, not based on exploitation? What if we create a system that's based on nurture instead? Mm -hmm. What would that even look like? How would we do it? And, but I love the idea of discussing that and uh, kind of using the power of the audience to solve these problems and getting them excited about getting them excited about changing what's wrong in the world instead of feeling frightened and kind of, you know, withdrawn and shutting down because it's like, oh, it's too big, it's too scary, it's too intimidating. But instead reaching out to the other people that they shared the experience of the theater with reaching out and saying, oh, you're interested in this. Well, I run an organization that does that. We can connect. And it empowers people. It creates networks. And I think that's what's needed to address the big problems that we have in the world right now. And I just love puppets as sort of like a point of focus that helps people see possibilities. Yeah, because it's objective. We we yeah. are not identify properly. We can just be a bit like yeah. out of it. Wow, I love it. I I feel that every show I would cre create in the future, I must do post uh, discussion. <laughs> it's kind yes. of like you bring me like, oh, this is the duty you need to to bring yes. the connection in your audience because it, they are there and they experience yeah. something in common. Yeah. Yes. And also just to just to share even the simple, you know, even if your show is not political, if you have a post show discussion, you're just sharing like, how is this political to me? And like that in itself is so nourishing. So it's like a way that we can feed each other. Wow, that's well said. And with your like experience as a human, you can for sure inspire and just like preach what you believe or or say like what what's the future i feel it's really remarkable oh thank you thank you wow. and uh, i want for the conclusion i always ask the puppeteer to bring puppets in front of the screen i know you you prepare i have many puppets here well first i'd like to um put you in big big all right all right you know what all right so unfortunately i've got um a window coming through here so there's a, a little too much light but um i want to introduce you this is this is astra wow this is the main character yes this is this is the main character and um 
So the, the story of Astra is, about, it's based on Astra's experiences. And so we, we, see, uh, we see her uh, starting off as a as quite a young child. Um, and then we kind of follow her story as uh, she becomes um, a teenager and young adult and how her views of her world change quite radically. And until, um, you know, she, she starts off in quite a privileged society. And then by the end, she is working um, in solidarity and making huge personal sacrifices mm. to change what is wrong in her world. So, um, yes, yeah, so this is Astra. And I'll show you um, Lilt as well. You create all of those, right? Yes, yes, yes. I built all these puppets. Yes, yes. Wow. Yeah. So this is Lilt. And uh, this is a child that she meet that Astra meets when she's quite young. And they, uh, they sort of grow up uh, in the same community together. Um, and their paths diverge, but then they come back together later on. So she's uh, important. Uh, so uh, sorry, I keep I keep calling uh, Lilt is Lilt is actually non-binary character. So Lilt is a a, a they and a them. Mm. And uh, uh, in the in the original book series, Lilt was a she. So I I still trip up a bit sometimes. But um, but Lilt uh, is very um, I would say uh, in, inspires a lot of insight for mm. for Astra and inspires some action as well, some um, political um, sort of um, some, some action to, to change her society. Wow, I love the fact that her eyes are kind of in glasses or like it, it's flaring the, the lights. Oh, it's just, yes, yeah, it's, it's just the, the light coming through my window is a little intense. But it's, it's beautiful, the fact that in, in, in her eyes we see like a uh yeah some some lights it's beautiful Thank Raven, you. I, I want you to plug all your social media if people want to contact <laughs> you reach you say oh i want to work with you or however uh, where they should go and reach you all right well first it's it's probably just easiest just to look me up on facebook if you can see the spelling of my name just type in raven kaliana in facebook and you will find me just send me a friend request um, you can say that you you saw me on the puppet podcast. That would be nice to know. Um, and also, um, uh, I have a, a website that's just again my name. It's ravenkaliana.com. If you want to know more about the Astra show, the website for that one is astratheater.earth. Mm. And uh, I have a whole bunch of you know various various other social media things. So um uh it's mostly it's mostly my name <laughs> raven kaliana with no um with no space uh you can also find me on twitter at uh puppet revolution it's it's like puppet revolution except i've dropped the e because there wasn't enough space so <laughs> it's puppet revolution on uh on twitter and uh instagram is just raven kaliana all squished together, no space. Perfect. I drop it just in the comments oh, right, right. as Thank you were you. talking. Thank so, uh, yeah, everyone, if you want to reach Raven, she she's a lovely lady, really reachable, <laughs> really passionate. So it's it's really interesting. Thank you so much, Raven, for your time you. and your passion. Thank it you. was a great moment to have you on the wow. show. Oh, thank you so much for inviting me. It's really, really lovely to do podcasts. I'm really very excited about it and look forward to seeing more podcasts. Yeah, thank you so much. I will have to remove you from the screen to conclude, okay. but stay in the virtual studio. We could chat a little after that. Okay, sounds good. So say bye bye, everyone, to Raven. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much. <laughs> Woo, everyone thank you for watching and yeah feel free to share this episode and and talk about it and just refer me other puppeteer that i must interview i always love to have some suggestion of talent uh, from all over the world i know 
we reach a lot of community all over. So uh, also feel free to see our Patreon. Here is, uh, here, I have it, June, our Patreon community, if you want to know more about what we do, what's going on. We put a lot of content over there, but also on Facebook, Instagram, and every social media. So yeah, share the love of puppetry. And all together, we will conquer the world. So everyone, I will wish you a good uh, afternoon, evening, depending on where you are. But uh, stay uh, safe or stay happy. Stay enthusiastic about art. Keep creating. And uh, everyone will live from that. That's my wish and the wish of the Puppet Podcast. So, yay. Bye-bye, everyone. Mm -hmm.